So I'm a farmer's son. You know, I came from a, uh, came to, uh, uh, I born and brought up in a small uh, farmer's village. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So um, I born and brought up in a small village. Uh, it's a farmer's village, and uh, I, uh, my, my parents are farmers, and uh, uh, we are eight children for my parents, and we used to be very uh, poor. You know, I'm. You know, it's a small poor. Uh, village and uh, just to give you a small background, it was, I was so we were so poor that I used to get uh, every year one shirt and one short. You know, it's for, it's during a village festival. Okay, so um, this is uh, that's one of the picture you can see. Uh, you know, this is taken almost like 20 uh, oh almost 25 26 years ago. Okay, where so, are you? Uh, yeah, I'm somewhere in the middle. So if you want to know who, which one is me, we can, <laughs> you can come to me later. If anybody can know that, you know, which one is me, they can uh, raise hands. So, um, topless sorry. <laughs> topless yeah, maybe. Oh, oh, but okay. So no, no, no. Some of the topless one are my brothers, and uh, you know, uh, there's my sister as well, and three of my brothers in the picture, and two of them are topless. You can see they're topless because. Only the elder ones used to get the shirt and short. You know, the smaller ones, you know, normally they don't get, you know. So because that kind of poverty we used to be. So uh, then, yes, I uh, came to Mumbai when I was 13, uh, following the dreams. Because Mumbai is uh, like, uh, like Hong Kong of India, you know, or, or uh, you know, the New York, New York of uh, uh, India. So I came to Bombay when I was 13, and I used to, uh, I got a job in a cafeteria, the restaurants. And I used to work from morning 6 o'clock to evening 6 uh, uh, there. And then I studied in the night schools. And then used to come back to the same cafeteria and sleep there. You know, this was my life, OK? So it's go, you know, went on until uh, 2002. And uh, in 2002, I was working in a small uh, bar, beer bar. And there, I had to meet, you know, uh, one uh, Western guy, a tourist. Uh, he came to our bar, and uh, at that moment, actually, I finished my job, and I was coming out of the restaurant. I saw I he wanted to go in with some of his friends, so I raised the uh, you know the shutter of the uh, restaurant, and then I asked him to go in. So in that restaurant, I was the only boy who speaks a little bit of uh, English. Even now, my English is very uh, not so good, so I'm sorry about that. Um, then uh, I took his order and I left out. And the next day, when I was playing cricket. In a, in, a, in a ground, I used to play cricket, and then I saw one guy watching us playing cricket. I offered him, I said, uh, uh, that's uh, Chris, you can see that white guy, I mean, you know, that uh, him. So that's me next to him. So uh, then, uh, that was in 2002, I met him, and, uh, and when I was playing cricket, I asked him, offered him to play cricket, because he was watching. And I asked him what he what he's doing in Mumbai. He said, "I'm volunteering. You know, I'm volunteering in uh, in a school." So the thing is, even that time, I didn't know what is volunteering. I asked him, "What is volunteering?" You know. So, but he explained more about it, what he's doing. And even I had very negative image about the foreigners at that time because I used to work in a very touristy place, and a lot of other experiences, you know, made me these foreigners come here for some other stuff. You know. So when he said volunteering, I was like, "Wow, it sounds really interesting." You know. Uh, and he explained more about it, and he said there are a lot of people who go to different countries uh, to, you know, do this kind of thing, charity stuff. So that was the time we become, I said, okay, so you are here for a few months, so you can join me every day to play cricket. So that's where we become friends, okay? And then in 2002, he went to Brazil. You know, there he took a, there was, when he was staying in a guest house, some people came to him and uh, uh, offered him whether he want to visit favelas, which is like a slums. So he went with them, and then he called me uh, and said, Krishna, you know, I've been on this kind of tours in Brazil. Can we do something similar in Mumbai? So when he said that, I was a little bit, really, you know, who want to go to the slums, you know? And then he said, oh, you know, we have, like, we have Asia's largest slum, you know? In Mumbai, we have a slum, which is one of the largest slum in Asia, where more than a million people live. You know, in, in Mumbai, in fact, more, more, more than half the population of Mumbai live in the slums. So when he said that, it, I was a little bit negative about it. And then uh, I thought, okay, let's go to Dharavi and see. So I took Chris into Dharavi. So we were walking around. 
people are, uh, you know, reacting to us, you know, they were even shouting at us and like shouting at me, like, why the hell I'm here, you know, with the foreigner in, in the slum. So then they used to say, hey, take him to Gateway of India, which is like a very touristy place, or Malabar Hills, you know, richer part of Mumbai. So they, uh, then I used to ask them, why you think I shouldn't be here? I used to cross question them, you know, why you think I shouldn't be here? Because what happened when I went into the slum first time with Chris, I live in Mumbai, right? But I never dared to go to Dharavi because I heard about Dharavi in my geography book when I was studying in my fifth grade. There was something like, you know, Asia's largest open, dirty place. If you translate my language into English, it will be same like that. So I was thinking Dharavi is somewhere in Asia. Not in, not in Mumbai, because I'm from a small, and I mean, not in my village, because it's a small, beautiful, you know, farmer's village. So, uh, and then uh, when I came to Bombay, I got to know Dharavis in Mumbai, but I never dared to go into Dharavi, because people used to talk a lot of negative things about it. Dharavi, a lot of Tamilian people live there, the, you know, the danger and all these things. So then when we planned this, of course, I went, I saw different things, you know. It's completely changed my mindset towards the place lot of work going on. Of course, you know, the, these two, you know, Max and Jaco, they've been to that area. So, um, <clears throat> and then, uh, yes, a lot of industries going on, recycling, leather industries, you know, the largest, you know, uh, uh, industry in Dharavi is a leather industry, you know, and uh, we have garment industry, pottery, the clay pots, the pots which is, you know, used in their shop outside is from Dharavi, it's made in Dharavi, okay? So a uh, lot of things are going, more than 10,000 small scale industries going on in the slum, okay? So we thought, yes, we want to bring people here, right? So when people are reacting to us, you know, why I'm there, you know, when they're shouting at us, I ask them, why you think we shouldn't be here? So these people like, oh, these foreigners might come here and take photos and go back to the country and tell, oh, look at these poor people and hungry people, you know, all these things. Then I used to ask uh, them, you know, what, tell me more about you, what, what you are exactly. Oh, they're like, oh, come to my shop and see how many people are working. And I work, you know, I, my product is exported here. You know, I recycle like 1,000 kilos of plastic a day. I make these food products, you know, all these things. Then I was like, exactly. This is exactly what I'm trying to show him. And we want to bring more people into Dharavi, you know, to show your positive side. And we want to do something back to the community, you know. It won't be a tour where we tell people, come, look at the slum, take some photos, and you go back. So we decide, because when we go in, yes, there are a lot of, uh, you know, positive things are going on like sense of community, friendly people, you know, the dreams you can see there. So we thought, yes, we want to do this, but at the same time there are other problems, you know, like there are uh, lack of sanitation, there are electricity wires hanging everywhere, there are children you might see defecating on the streets, working condition is poor. So, uh, you know, then we thought, okay, all these things are there, it's because of lack of quality education you know, or access to quality education. So we thought we do this, you know, we can do the tour, we can show people a positive set of slum and then we can raise funds which can be used for children's education, you know. So that's how we started it, okay. And then when I was explaining it to the people, like this kind of thing, they say, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, come, marry, you know, bring, you know, show them my shop and all these things started. So then later I spent more than a month in Dharavi, you know, explaining people, finding the route, and you know, designing all these tours and all. And finally, in 2006, we started this, this uh, tour. And even there, as I said, there are two challenges for us to do this. One, yes, convincing people in Dharavi with this project. And second is to, con which was easy, as I said, you know, it was easy for me to communicate and all. But second challenge for us was to convincing people to come on the tour. So what we did is we made some flyers, you know, and then we, uh, <clears throat> there's a main, like a touristy area. We used to go there and give, hand over these flyers to people. Even there are people who took the flyer and, you know, threw it on my face, you know, like, oh, slum, you know, what you're trying to do, you know. So, but finally on 26th of January, uh, one Australian girl came on our tour. And after the tour, she came back to our office and she said, it's an eye opener. It's really awesome. It's really different. Then we were like, yes, you know, it will work. So 
Then after that, you know, more people started to come, and then in 2007, we uh, were uh, featured in Lonely Planet, which is a tour guide book. And then we got a lot of media, international media and uh, local media. So we become, you know, popular. So now we, and then slowly we started all our tours. You know, we, now we work almost all over uh, India. You know, we organize tours all, more, all over India. And uh, we also based in Delhi. And uh, we, uh, so how exactly we do this is, you know, we, uh, these are some more pictures, if I can see. Okay, this is actually Dharavi, you can see, that's where I kind of work. And uh, this is like, you know, the recycling, you know, which is happening within the slum. And uh, this is like, you know, one of uh, the, that's pottery, the slum, you know, the, the Kumbharwada where they're making pots. It's a whole village where they're making pots. So, um, <coughs> And this is our school, okay? We run schools now. We have more than 500 children in the school. And we also have a community center where we teach uh, computers, English, and soft skill. And um, these are some of our, uh, our, yeah, these are some of the awards and all these things we won. And yes, now we're based in Delhi and Mumbai. And uh, we have, uh, we, are st we started with only six people in the beginning. Now we are almost 100 uh, employees, you know, we are, you know, our team is almost 100 uh, people now. And, uh, and then, of course, we have won a uh, lot of uh, awards, you know, mm, like it is uh, one of the award when, we, when I took it to the office. Even there is, I'm over there somewhere in the corner, so uh, in that picture. So, yes, we, we gained a lot of support from the people, you know, so uh, I traveled in some other countries as well. And we have raised more than, uh, you know, 50 million rupees for our project. And we used and uh, we worked with more than uh, 10,000 uh, beneficiaries in the slum, okay? So all these, you know, of course, because of social responsibility, you know, and the work we are trying to do. And in fact, I'm right now here, you know, it's really nice to be, you know, in front of you. And I really would like to say uh, thank you, you know, MAD Festival. For, uh, for this opportunity, you know, for inviting me here to explain about what we do. And uh, yeah, same time, a lot of people tell me like, you know, you, you are very successful now, you, uh, you know, you have achieved your dreams, but uh, sometimes, you know, most of the time, I, now I actually, I tell no, you know, so there is still a lot to do, you know, I'm still uh, following my dreams uh, because uh, success is not, uh, you know, not a destination, you know, it's, a, it's, an, op it's an ongoing journey and uh, some people who can go, you know, or keep moving uh, with passion, uh, with uh, hard work, and with dedication towards uh, uh, social responsibility can find the success every corner. So that's what I believe in, and uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Krishna. I, I want to know if there is any difficulty from the governments for you uh, to <coughs> run the travel and agency? Uh, no, in the beginning there was little, uh, you know, the negative thing because slum and all these kind of things. But later, what we did is we started from the community. We got the support from the community. We didn't go from uh, uh, top to bottom. You know, we started from the, like first, as I says, I spent more than a month in the slum to get the people understand what we are trying to do, okay? So when we have people support, so it's like, it's common, you know, people want it, you know, and also, yes, we had uh, some issues, like some of the politicians said, like, uh, you know, oh, oh, once I was on a tour with Hong Kong uh, general, consul general, and uh, there was a lot of politicians around me, they were worried, you know, what I'm trying to tell, you know, where they said, oh, don't talk about this dirty water, don't talk about, you know, wa you know, like poor thing, tell only good things about it. I said, no, you know, so it's about, we are trying to tell the reality, you know, that's what reality tours and travel is about, you know, so that was there, but otherwise, you know, as we have community together with us, and uh, people, uh, people support we have, so we are, uh, you know, very open with what we do, you know, 80% of the profit definitely used for the community projects, okay, there are accounts, it's on our website as well, it is very clear, and, uh, and, so far, we didn't face any problem. Yeah, sometimes media, you know, they one or we got within these 13, 14 years, we got one or two media, little bit of negative what we are trying to do. But then when they really understand how it is done. For example, for me, it's very difficult to explain what, even though all these pictures, I cannot explain. 
So I think the best people who can explain what we do is here because they've been on the tour. They have seen what it is, you know? So uh, yes.